It's another edition of the Agents of Inclusion podcast brought to you by Special Olympics and Odyssey. I'm JR of the JR Sport Brief Show on CBS Sports Radio. And the purpose of this podcast is to inspire and encourage everyone to open up and be more inclusive. Not just for you, but others as well. We have new episodes that drop every Wednesday. And if you have not subscribed, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and do it now while you're listening. And for this episode, we're making a stop in Frederick, Maryland, right outside of Baltimore in D.C. We're going to be speaking with my main man, Adam Hayes. Adam works for Special Olympics Maryland in their digital department, but started off as an athlete in a multitude of sports. He's been to Europe as a torchbearer. And if you're in Maryland, you might have seen him riding through your town as he's a very active bike rider. Let's hear from Adam about his life, his work, and how he's not letting anything stop him. And once you hear his story, you will understand why. That's right. It's time for another edition of the Agents of Inclusion podcast. And as I mentioned right now, we are being joined by Special Olympics athlete and also employee coming out of Frederick, Maryland. It's my main man, Adam Hayes. Adam, how are you? Doing great, JR. Thanks for letting me be on. <laughs> no problem. We, we first met last year during the Media for the Movement tour, a stop at the University of Maryland As a part of that, you did a great presentation to some students about health. And I want people to learn more about you, your cycling, all the work you do for ESSO. So we got a lot to discuss. First of all, first question, I should say, what and who got you involved in Special Olympics? How long have you been participating in the organization? So I've been involved in Special Olympics for uh, for about uh 28 years now since 1995 uh and uh i got involved with uh special olympics uh through uh through some of my classmates uh um when i was in uh middle school uh that when i was part of a, another uh program for people with intellectual disabilities uh, uh through baseball and uh, uh and I, I joined uh, um, it, with uh, my first sport being uh, soccer. And uh, that's what opened all of Special Olympics up for me. And now I'm uh, doing all these different uh, great sports uh, that I love. That's cool, man. And we're going to get into, I think, what is probably your main sport. I mean, since we met last year, you know, we, we have each other each other's information. I know we text to talk, message each other every now and then. We're going to get into your cycling. You go all over the place, especially in Maryland. What are some of these other sports besides soccer that you participate in? I know you got a lot of medals, my man. So uh, soccer, uh, cycling, basketball, alpine skiing, swimming, and tennis. Yep. (laughs) <laughs> what don't, what don't you do, man? Is there a sport that you haven't tried or participated in? What do you want to try to do? Uh, well, one of the sports that I'd uh, love to uh, try to do is uh, is uh, uh, the mini tri or those fast triathlons uh, because that uh, combines all three of the sports I basically already do and. Uh, I know that Special Olympics has that, and that that would be cool to uh, to kind of combine all three of those in. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Well, well, not only are you an athlete and and participate in Special Olympics, where you have so many medals, and I want to spend more time on your experiences there. What do you currently do for Special Olympics? Because down in Maryland, you actually work for the organization, don't you? Right. So uh, I uh, am a a digital media uh, and multimedia uh, coordinator for uh, Special Olympics Maryland, uh, where I've been uh, working uh, for uh, them since uh, 2007. Uh, And uh, I've been uh, and I uh, create uh, our um, create a lot of the uh, online content uh, uh, with the videos. I help uh, with social media. And uh, I also uh, do a lot of athlete leadership stuff. Uh, Part of my job, uh, since I'm an athlete leader myself, 
to help uh, identify and uh, and uh, and recruit new athletes uh, into our athlete leadership programs. That's cool. So not only are you a participant, you're you're also participating in in spreading the world, spreading the word. For anyone who isn't familiar with with athlete leadership, what does that mean exactly? Someone who's in that role, what do they do? So athlete leadership is where uh, um, uh, athletes or special big uh, athletes get to learn how to uh, tell their story uh, through um, uh, through uh, different ways and help uh, help uh, lead the way in our organization. Uh, in all different roles, whether it's uh, being a public speaker, uh, uh, being uh, do, doing video like I like to do, or being a board member, uh, all different types of roles, even uh, coaches or referees. I hear that. Well, tell us a little bit about your own story. You, you have, and this is what I love about you, you haven't let anything that's ever happened to you deter you from going out and living your life and being a positive contributor to society. Tell us about your own story. So I uh, was uh, born, I'm I'm 38 years old, uh, and I was born uh, with a condition known as uh, hydrocephalus or water on the brain. Uh, uh, And uh, um, I've had uh, 30, uh, 36 major brain surgeries. Uh, since birth uh, uh, due to that. Um, And I uh, had been, uh, I've grown up here in Frederick, Maryland uh, for a majority of my life, originally from Baltimore. uh, But uh, I've uh, been um, all throughout my life. I've, uh, I've, dealt around with my, uh, my intellectual disability, but hasn't stopped me because I've gotten to do a lot of incredible stuff, uh, from, uh, graduating high school, graduating with my associate degree in visual communications, doing the video and, uh, and, uh, social media stuff. Uh, I, uh, I, I, uh, went, uh, got my Eagle Scout and Boy Scouts, uh, and I drive my uh, drive and own my own car, and I live in my own apartment. Uh, so I do a lot of different, really cool things. I've uh, not let my intellectual disability define me. I'm uh, and today. I'm uh, I've uh, just uh, get to uh, help spread the word of Special Olympics through all that I love to do. I've even gotten to go to uh, to a lot of uh, amazing uh events from uh from um state to national even international levels uh from uh getting to go to uh um the USA games and get uh to uh you might see over uh, my uh sho- my uh, shoulder uh, two gold medals from our 2014 USA games to the world games in Athens Greece as a torchbearer so I've wow. gotten to do so many cool things. Now that's a lot of cool yeah. things. I want to yeah. I want to ask you about that trip to Greece. I haven't yeah. even been to Greece. What message would you have to folks? Even listening to your story, how you haven't let it stop you from or stop you from going out and doing anything. What message would you share to folks who might feel, you know, kind of hesitant or scared or afraid of just venturing outside and, and being amazing. What message of encouragement would you share? Don't don't let uh, uh, your uh, if you uh, have a disability or not. Just don't let uh, anything uh, uh, stand in your way. Uh, don't uh, I don't let my intellectual disability define me. I I always uh, want people to know that. Uh, your uh whether you have an intellectual disability or not that well, we're uh we may be different but uh we all uh are the same and are uh in wanting to achieve and um live together uh as um as as a society and that's all people with intellectual disabilities want and that's what everybody should just just include 
in uh, in all different ways. You you hit the nail on the head. Live together. I mean, we're, we're all on this third rock from the sun, floating around together. At, at minimum, we should be able to try to get along and, and get along together. I, I appreciate you sharing that those words. Now, let's get back to Greece here, man. You went to Greece and did what? Explain to us about the, the, the torch run. And you had the torch. Tell us about this. So uh, I uh, was uh, one of 10 athletes from across the globe in 2011 to uh, be selected to uh, carry the flame of hope, uh, which um, <coughs> which embodies uh, the spirit and all of Special Olympics. Uh, and uh, it, uh, uh, I uh, got to uh, run with 100 police officers throughout uh, the world uh as we helped we started from the top of the acropolis in athens greece and ran uh in three different groups throughout cyprus crete and all the greek islands at least that's what my route did and uh we all went throughout greece and uh i got to speak uh speak uh at these all these different locations and uh getting people excited for the world games and uh I uh, ran, uh, I'm guessing, about uh, 60 to 70 miles throughout those three weeks that I was there and just getting people pumped for the World Games. So, yeah. That's a pretty cool experience, especially when yeah. you think about just the, the the modern Olympics originating out in Greece. And you said you did about 60 to 70 miles with the torch on foot, right? Right, yeah. No, it, it was... Uh, uh, I, uh, um, we ran probably about, uh, three to five miles, uh, um, about, uh, several times a day. And I, uh, spoke, uh, every time I went out there, uh, I, uh, I bought a book, uh, that, uh, um, that, uh, kind of showed me the basics of, uh, Greek language. And I actually incorporated that into my speech. Uh, uh, like uh, Yas says hello or Efristo, uh, thank you very much. You know, I just uh incorporated some of the, some of that language to kind of get uh kind of show that I was excited to be there and I wanted I wanted to uh get everybody pumped. Hey, Adam, I didn't expect for me and everybody listening to to learn a couple of words of uh of Greek. <laughs> Tell me again, how do I say hello to somebody? Uh, yasas. Yasas. Yep. Okay, I'm gonna try that. And how do I say goodbye? Uh, I uh think that's uh no, I actually I don't remember right now, but it's those, okay. those those two uh um uh, those two uh things that I uh remember putting those in the uh in my speech uh and. Uh, I still remember those two uh, hey, in my days. Not not a bad deal. You know much more than I do. I <laughs> I just know Yasas. I know how to I know how to say hello now. I don't. Yeah. Maybe I don't leave. I don't know how to say goodbye. Right. <laughs> but for for all that running you did, and that's an amazing experience going through the Greek islands and in 2011, when we met and spoke last year, you told me about your cycling. You are on your bike through metropolitan baltimore frederick maryland two to yep. three times a week you are clocking major miles how much cycling do you do i get in about uh 1500 miles a year on my bike uh that's uh that's about uh 20 20 miles about th uh three to four times a week um uh, and uh oh well during uh, during the colder times, about uh, several uh, hours on on the bike trainer uh, in my apartment, but uh, but uh, most of the time it's just exploring all throughout uh, my area, going up to the mountains, uh, about fifteen hundred feet up in the uh, elevation, you know, and just riding all around uh, in uh, around my town. I usually like to have a good uh, twenty thirty mile route that I do. Uh, that loops all around um, my uh, city. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. I get on a stationary bike maybe once or twice a week. 
and maybe I'm maxed out at two miles. So you're putting me to shame. I got to do better. What prompted you or what got you in love with bike riding? What was the introduction in? So my introduction, uh, well, I already uh, learned how to ride my bike when I was six from my dad. Uh, uh, but, uh, what really got me into, uh, bike riding was my, uh, my younger brother, Kevin. Uh, he, uh, is a huge cyclist himself. Uh, you think I do a lot. He, uh, does a huge amount. He's got like 10 different bikes for different uses. Uh, wow, but, that's a lot. Uh, uh, but I, uh, he got me into it and, uh, he, um, um, and I started out with a mountain bike, then I went into a hybrid bike and now I have a road bike. And, uh, in 2007, I, uh, uh found out that we have a cycling program in Special Olympics, Maryland. Uh, and I said, I wanted to try that. And ever since then, I've been competing every year, uh, in cycling uh, doing 5k, 10k and 15k road races. I love it, man. I have to up my, I have to up my cycling game. I don't know if my knees will let me do it, but I'm, I'm going to go ahead and try the, the most, uh, uh, the most in one, uh, bout that I've ever done is about, uh, 65 miles, uh, from, uh, from Fairmont, Maryland up above Gettysburg, Pennsylvania and back, uh, in about four and a half hours. And that's usually about 3000 feet of elevation, maybe more. Uh, and, uh, it's, uh, and I, my, uh, I want to eventually, uh, do, a uh, a full 100 mile, uh, century. That's, that's like a, a big goal of mine to do eventually. Hey, that you, you say it so casually. That's so cool that you do that. <laughs> After a couple of miles, they'd be scraping me off the side of the road, man. Kudos to you. I, I'll cheer you. I, I'll cheer you on, but I don't know if I'd be able to ride with you, Adam. <laughs> Maybe on the most. Uh, we, we do have like a uh, a flat a flat century uh, uh, that uh, you could do so. Uh, Never say never. <laughs> hey, you know what? If 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 you have, you know how you get on the motorcycles and they have the little buckets on the side. Yeah. Maybe I just sit in a bucket while you do the cycling, and I just <laughs> hand you water and snacks or something like that. That'll be the the best bet there. But it, it's cool that your your brother helped <laughs> influence that. And I know you and your brother are all about the wheels, all about cycling. And your dad, yep. he's he's the opposite. He's he's up in the air, isn't he? Right. Yeah. My dad, my dad's a pilot. Uh, he, uh, he's been flying, flying, uh, since, uh, well before I was born, he got his pilot's license when he was 16 and he's owned several airplanes throughout his, uh, life. And, uh, I, uh, love getting to go up in, uh, the air with him, uh, and, uh, not only just seeing what's, uh, going on, uh, down below, but, uh, but, um, getting to fly to, uh, different places locally, uh, to grab lunch or, you know, uh, uh just, uh, see the, uh, be up in the air. And, uh, I mean, I, uh, I may not have my pilot's license, but I know enough how to fly the airplane, uh, if there ever were an emergency. So I, I, it's, it's a lot of fun. Wait a minute. So you could, you could kind of man an airplane if necessary. If, if necessary, I know, I know enough, uh, to, um, uh, to, uh, do, to land and all that stuff. It's, uh, it's, uh, um, uh, thanks to being around all the, uh, all the flying stuff my entire life. It's, uh, it's, uh, a lot of fun to be up in the air with them. I'm sure it's it's up in the air. You're used to being on the ground. You're yeah. on your bike. You're going through the mountains. When you're when you're in an airplane, it can be a relaxing type of feeling. Do you? Yep. What do you think about? Do you have like a, a different perspective on life or everything going down below when you're up in the air? Well, it's always just really cool seeing all the uh, the 
cars and the uh you can't really see the people because you're so high up but it's like wow uh we're uh, in a different uh different environment and we're uh uh, just uh, getting to see all uh, see the clouds below, see all uh, uh, the 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 land looks totally different when you're way up there, and um, and uh, you just feel free. And uh, I know that's how my dad always feels when he's up in the air. And I, I really love getting to uh, spend time, whether it's on the ground or in the air, uh, doing these cool things. That's pretty awesome. That's cool to to share those experiences with your pop, man. Whether you're on the ground, whether you're in the air, when you're doing the great work that you do for Special Olympics, videograph, videographer, digital media, et cetera, when it's time to relax and chill out, what are you watching? What are you listening to? How do you kind of just get yourself at ease? So so when I'm uh, out, uh, uh, when I'm just chilling out, I love uh, just hanging here, uh, playing my video games, uh, watching my uh, favorite uh, shows like uh, The Flash or uh, or uh, anything on uh, Disney Plus. You know, I love all the uh, all the Marvel uh, related stuff. So uh, I'm uh, I'm uh, wa- watching. Uh, all that on Disney Plus. We're going to the movie theaters, getting the bigger screen experience because uh, it's always cool getting to watch those first on the big screen, especially because of my uh, love of movies and stuff. Uh, and, or uh, and usually I'm either doing that or taking long walks, like two to two to five miles, or uh, or hanging out with my friends you know the, the, my, my life is just uh pretty chill but i uh, uh but not very much because because i uh i'm always involved with my special olympic stuff <laughs> that's cool man i love yeah. how you keep so busy i gotta point this out though you mentioned the flash and then you also mentioned marvel yep are you a dc guy or are you a marvel guy like if you had to choose one which one would it be well, I mean, I love uh, the Flash just because it's because uh, uh, he's a uh, the fastest uh, man uh, alive on the DC side. But I'm all for uh, Marvel just because I love uh, all the uh, story aspects of uh, of all of all the different characters, and uh, and I've followed uh, that since uh, they started the uh, started all all the uh, movies. Back in uh, the uh, late uh, 2000s, uh, early 2010s, I've uh, followed everything. Uh, and now that it's on Disney Plus, I can watch it all in order or or in uh, story order. You know, it's uh, uh, it's just a lot of fun to uh, to uh, escape and uh, watch your favorite characters. Uh, um uh in all these different stories <laughs> listen i haven't seen a marvel movie in about 20 years i i got some major catching up to do i, I may have you to have call you up and i do i may have <laughs> to call you up and get some cliff notes okay just be prepared yeah. for that <laughs> yep yep it's so awesome adam to, to talk with you and to learn about everything that you've done everything that you've worked on that you've accomplished uh your, your hobbies it's an inspiration to just know that you you're not letting anything stop you, man. It, it makes me happy even to think about it. And I got to get up to Maryland, and I don't know if we got to check out a Marvel movie. I'm way behind, or whether I get on a bike. But when I get back to Maryland, we gonna hang out, man. Deal. That would be awesome, man. I appreciate that. I appreciate your time, even in doing this. Give the people one more message on inclusivity, why it's important. So uh, we're right now. Uh, uh, in the uh, inclusion revolution, like uh, we like to say, uh, but uh, just uh, I, I want to encourage everyone to uh, um, get out there and uh, join uh, in the fun that uh, Special Olympics uh, is in your area and uh, um, play alongside my fellow athletes uh, because uh, you'll learn just like 
uh, today uh, that uh, we have a lot of the same interests and uh, uh, what we look like, what we sound like, uh, that's that's only uh, some small in, uh, in the, the largeness of uh, what uh, you can see that uh, we uh, strive to be, which is like everyone else and what we uh, love to do. So just get out, just get out there and, and uh, remember to include us in all your activities. We love, we want to be there. We are so much more alike than we are different. And a lot of times all it takes is just, just a conversation. It's, it's really that simple. A lot of times just right. a conversation. Hey, Adam, I appreciate you, my man. Thanks a lot, JR. This was awesome. <laughs> As always, I look forward to getting up to Maryland. And I don't know, we may have to get on a bike, a plane, an automobile, a train. We, we going to make it happen. That'd be awesome. <laughs> Shout out to my guy, Adam Hayes. Does anyone really have any excuses after hearing that? And on a separate note, I need to get my bike. Thank you, Adam, for the background on yourself and for the inspiration. I can't wait to get up in a plane with him. And so please, whether it's volunteering, playing or just encouraging, go to specialolympics.org to find a local event or program near you. Events are year round all over the world. That means wherever you live, too. I'm JR from CBS Sports Radio. I need to start bike riding. And this is Agents of Inclusion, the podcast brought to you by Special Olympics and Odyssey. New episodes drop every Wednesday, but don't just subscribe. Embrace others and be inclusive.